Hey everyone, in this video I'm making chloroform. I figured since my last video was on iodoform, um, I should show what, how to make chloroform. So in this bowl here, I've got a three neck, um, one liter round bottom flask. And it's surrounded by ice. And then underneath it, I have my hot plate. So the reason that's there is for stirring. I, uh, if I had an overhead stir, I could use that instead, but I don't. So I'm gonna hope that my hot plate stir is powerful enough to stir through all that. Um, attached to the flask, I've got a, a gram condenser that'll serve as my reflux condenser. Um, I've got a thermometer. Unfortunately, I don't think my thermometer is gonna reach down far enough into the liquid, but I'm still hoping it'll give me a good idea of temperature. And I have an addition funnel. So how this reaction works is I'm gonna add calcium hypochlorite to that flask and some water. And then I'm gonna slowly add acetone through the addition funnel. And this reaction is just extremely exothermic. So uh, the ice is gonna be there to help cool it down and reflux is gonna be necessary. So anyway, I'm gonna get the chemicals added and show you that. Okay, I've added my chemicals. I put in 200 milliliters of water into that round bottom flask and then just kept scooping in uh, calcium hypochlorite until I felt it was good. I must have added uh, a little over 100 grams by the time I was done. I've been swirling that in the flask uh, to get it to cool down uh, for a while now. And I've got my condenser pump turned on. Now I'm going to be adding the acetone through that addition funnel. So if you don't have an addition funnel, you can just pour acetone straight down the top of your uh, reflux column and have it hit the uh, solution that way. Um, but however you add it, you're going to want to uh, do it slowly because, like I said, this reaction is super exothermic and has been known to run away. So if you add too much acetone too fast, it's going to run away. It could start blowing um, pieces of glass off. So that's not good. I'll uh, pour a few milliliters into that addition funnel. I don't want to get too much in there at one time, just in case um, it were to open without me looking. But I'll set a pretty slow drip rate and do my best to watch the temperature um, as it goes. You'll know this reaction is done because you'll be adding acetone and the temperature won't be increasing. And that'll be your indication. Okay, I'll start adding uh, acetone very slowly and I'll show you guys how this reaction looks in a few minutes. I'm about 15 minutes into the synthesis and all the solution inside the uh, round bottom flask is kind of clumped up and made this foam, foamy mass in there. Uh, there's still definitely a reaction going on. Um, you can kind of hear some off-gassing. And um, the temperature of the vapors above it has spiked to about 33 degrees Celsius. So I'm gonna let it cool for a bit and then um, add more acetone. Okay, I found out you need to add more uh, calcium hypochlorite than I uh, originally expected. So um, I had to add a couple tens of more grams carefully uh, to the flask and the reaction resumed. I was running low on acetone, so I didn't get to run this reaction as long as I wanted. But anyway, as soon as uh, you know that the reaction is done, then set up for simple distillation. Okay, here's my simple distillation setup. I've got the flask. I haven't changed anything about it on oil bath. Going up to a Kleisen still head, and then coming back down to my gram condenser, and that's going into a beaker. So I'll be heating the flask on the oil bath with a gentle flame and collecting what comes over. After distillation, we'll be left with two layers, uh, the bottom layer being chloroform. And uh, even as it's boiling, you can see the two layers separate in the round bottom flask. So after that's all distilled over, I'll uh, separate them out.
distillation's been going for about an hour and 15 minutes maybe, and I've already collected about 150 milliliters, which I'm liking. Um, temperature's been pretty constant, about 60 degrees Celsius. As soon as that starts to raise, then we know that we're taking some water um, over with us from the uh, boiling flask. So if I were to just distill over everything in here, everything liquid in here, I would be left with two layers. I would have a chloroform layer on the bottom and an acetone water layer on the top. But if I watch the temperature um, and stop distilling as soon as it goes above 60 degrees, then I think I can catch just the chloroform going over. Now probably at the cost of some yield, um, but that's okay with me. If not okay with you, then just distill over everything and separate out the bottom layer. Then uh, dry that bottom layer with a saturated salt water solution. And um, yeah, there's your product. Okay, I uh, finished the distillation up until it temperature started to raise and dried my product and then added a few milliliters of ethanol to stabilize it and this is the chloroform I got. Um, do not inhale it. Do not inhale it. Do not inhale it. Just don't inhale it. Um, it was popular anesthetic back in the day but um, even in the 1800s they replaced it with ether for health concerns so just don't inhale it. Um, anyway, that's how you make chloroform. Thanks for watching.